at the conference tournament in Kansas City in the toughest basketball conference in the country. Trevor Nell, yes! Up and under, toying with him. Can we roll? Let's go. Three, two, and one. Go Cougs. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. It is Big 12 Tournament Day for the Cougars and Knights as BYU looks to do something that is always tough, beat the same team three times in a season. Now, we have a unique setup here today. Okay, here are the parameters. We are not allowed to show you because of broadcast rights live coverage of the game, but that doesn't mean we can't react to it live and certainly take that conversation big picture. And we thought, who better than a couple of sharpshooters and all-time greats at BYU to help us do so? We welcome in the all-time leading scorer in BYU basketball history, Tyler Haas, and one of the greatest three-point shooters in the history of Cougar basketball, Jonathan Tavernard. Thanks for being with us as we talk live over the first 10 or so minutes of this game, guys. Yeah, hey, great to be here. This is this is awesome. Best time of the year, Spence. March is upon us, and uh, excited for for BYU and how they're playing. And uh, seems like seems like something good is brewing for these guys. JT, man, this is pretty wild. The BYU's at the Big Twelve tournament. I, it, the only times that I and I don't know about you, because we had you know after college we both played in Europe. The times that I miss basketball the most is right around March. Oh, yeah. Because yes. you get a little bit of, like, warm days. So spring is coming up. Obviously not here today in, in certain areas of Utah. <laughs> but and, and that's the time that I miss the most. Like, you start watching, you know, that, that Sunday before Selection Sunday, there are some conference tournaments coming up, and you see some finals. You see some, you know, teams booking the ticket for, for the big dance. And that's usually when I miss basketball the most. I change my ringtone to be, you know, the March Madness. He's keeping it on loud at work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited. So, yeah. Hey, we are officially underway in Kansas City. Tip just happened. So let's just start first things first. If you had to pick one thing, one stat, one specific category today, what has your immediate interest in this matchup between the Cougars and Knights? Well, I think for me it's rebounding. This UCF team it, it hits the glass so hard, especially on offense. They they rely on those second chance points, and so you know I think with with Diallo inside and and C J Walker, some of these guys that just crash the, the the glass so hard. BYU needs to to key in on that, but also make some shots. They, hey. they, they just got one to go. That's a great way and to start. And it's Ali Khalifa, <laughs> who I believe, that, that big man scenario, because who struggled in both games against the size of UCF, JT? Ali, and it's Ramadan. He's fasting. Like, this is yeah. a deeply religious week for him. He comes out and knocks down the first three. To me, what I would take as the most important part is, you know, not to kind of go away from what Tyler said, because I think that's a great point. But I think that what this BYU team does better than anything is, as we're seeing right now, is knocking down threes. You live and you die by it, and, and I get it. But I think that if they can be above 32, 33% from three, they're going to shoot enough that they will be able to, to win the game. To me, that's the key, right? The times that BYU has struggled are times that they don't make enough shots. Mm -hmm. And so to me, I feel mm -hmm. like, and, and somebody that I <laughs> personally, this happened to me a lot, the more shots I made on offense, the more energy I would have on defense. And so, um, you know, to Ty's point, I think rebounding is an incredible, important key. Um, especially, you know, with the food situation against the matchups. But I will add, the more shots you make on offense, the more energy, you know, it gives to you uh, on defense. At least that's that's what I see as the most important key. Uh, BYU has taken two threes. They have made both threes. They lead six to nothing. Great so start. This is, uh, yeah, an ideal start for the Cougars. UCF has missed their first three shots as Dallin Hall brings it into the front court. Okay, tight. last game against UCF, BYU only made eight three-pointers, yeah. but they did make 40 free throws. Mm -hmm. It's one of the hardest games to watch <laughs> in the history of basketball, in, yeah. in my consumption of basketball. Long. It was brutal. Yeah. So how many threes do you feel like BYU needs to make? Is it as simple as making 10, which has been kind of the magic number for them all season? Well, they, they didn't make 10 in either of the game, either of the first two yeah. games, and, and still found a way to win. I feel like that kind of that magic number is 12. If they can get to 12, BYU finds a way to kind of cruise to a 10-point victory. But it, it seems like 10 would be enough in a, in a game like this. But UCF, you know, to, to JT's point, like 
they get out, they guard this three-point line, and they're they're keyed in. They know the way that BYU wants to play, and so they're keying in on that. They have great size and length, and I feel like in those first two games, BYU struggled with how how fast they closed yeah. on the three-point line. They ran them off the three-point line. They were extra physical. Yeah, they shot 40 free throws. They they tried to make it a different game than the way BYU wants to play. Um, but, they, hey, this is a great start for, for BYU. <clears throat> the one thing I would add to that is uh, if we could somehow manage to not give away, you know, 20 points. <laughs> right? In the last yeah. two minutes. Right. That was wild. I I never, strong, I've never I seen know. anything like that. And you're referencing game two. It was like the last 90 seconds of the game. <laughs> and Mark Pope told you on an interview, I'll never forget, he goes, we just witnessed something that I don't think none of us will ever witness again. <laughs> It'll never happen again, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he even mentioned that to you and also in post game, he said, well, we just witnessed that team did. I don't think none of them will ever be a part of it ever again in their lives. And wild. So, yeah. I, the one thing that I would add to all the things that we're sharing, you know, I think the numbers that, that Ty has shared, they're pretty right there, right? In terms of, you know, 10, 12 threes, you know, controlling, rebounding. I think it's an area of specific that this team, it, it a lot of times, and not only, and I don't know if you remember, Coach Rose would always tell us the hardest game to win in a tournament is the first one. Sure. Yes. And so, uh, you know, this is BYU TV, so it's also okay to share. One of the coolest <laughs> experiences I ever had at BYU was right before we beat Florida. Yes. We all I got remember. together in Lamont Morgan's room. Mm -hmm. We got together and we said a prayer, mm -hmm. all of us together. Super, super, you know, spiritual experience. Well, and but the team meeting before that, too. That's right. And so, and, and that's the unique thing about BYU, right? And so I know that's BYU TV, so that's okay to share. Um, but I will say is not only for today's game, which they're showing incredible job, especially, you know, with, with Dallin Hall and this physical play from Diallo, but as they also go to the NCAA tournament, we know that they're a lock, right? We don't just don't know what they're seed, in, but they're, they're in. in at worst, a six seed. We think if they lose today, it doesn't probably matter. a six seed. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so, but to me is they started the game the right way today. Can they also do this tomorrow if they win? Can they do it next Thursday when they play? And so, and also how they start, but also as they finish, and what a pass. And so, to me, I feel like if they can control the game at the beginning and at the end, they're going to be very successful. It's an 8 to nothing lead for BYU. It was almost 10 nothing. Trevin Nell having a layup blocked on a great pass from Ali Khalifa. Uh, just to get you caught up, flagrant one foul called on Ibrahima Diallo, which granted Dallin Hall a couple of free throws. He made both of those. So, Cougars have made two threes. They made two free throws. Early eight-point lead. Let's talk big-picture scenario now, Ty. We're, we're talking about, okay, uh, over the course of this week, what happens if BYU wins one game in Kansas mm -hmm. City? What if they win two? What if they get upset today by UCF? How will this impact what BYU could potentially do in March Madness? So mm -hmm. let's start worst-case scenario. Uh, UCF rallies, they win this game, and they beat BYU. What, would, what do you believe that would do to BYU on the seed line in March Madness? Uh, I think maybe they drop one spot. I think maybe they're a six seed. I, I think, you know, looking at Joe Lenardi, he has them as the, the first five seed. And so, you know, I, I think if they, they drop this game, maybe they drop to a six. But... I, you know, just get in the tournament and, and to JT's point, find a way to win that first game and and you're off to the races. So you bring up a good point. BYU is the first five seed. So on his overall seed line, like if we're just numbering the teams from one to 68 to get in the field, BYU's number 17 and Trevin Nell has just scored a three. BYU's up 11 Ooh. to nothing. There is a timeout on the floor. <laughs> BYU has a double digit lead three minutes and six seconds into the game, JT. So, I mean, it looks good now, but we've learned in this conference, <laughs> no lead is safe. Like, no lead is safe. Um, on, the, on the big picture seed line, JT, even if they did lose today's game, are they far enough up the overall seed line that they could still be a five? Because this isn't, wouldn't technically be a bad loss. Yeah, right. I, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about the talk heads is it, BYU has playing Pittsburgh. BYU is playing Salt Lake. BYU might be playing in the moon on a different <laughs> bracket, right? And so I, I think to Tyler's point, what I predict in my, the way that I, I interpret all of these different, um, you know, scenarios and so on, if BYU can beat UCF today, if by chance they can also beat Texas Tech tomorrow, I think that there's no way that they're not a four seed. Yes, I, agree. I I have a hard time, you know, with all of the metrics and the different formulas, I have a hard time believing or thinking they're not a four seed. Um, if they win today and lose tomorrow, I think, you know, you kind of stay where you are. 
as you know one of the top you know one or two five seeds um but i would have a hard time believing that even if they lose tonight you know to ty's point and as you shared they would be lower than a six seed right i mean you look at the strength of schedule and you look at the big 12 schedule and then you look at the net rankings under the campon and it looks like there's also some severe weather in kansas city because <laughs> it's raining threes oh it's so, 14 to nothing goodness. ali khalifa with his second three <laughs> The one thing I will say is I'm going to repeat something I just shared. This is an incredible start. They get the possession again, a foul. Uh, UCF is close to be on bonus. Can we go from being up 14 to up 20? And I'm not saying to be up 30, 40 and by 50. It. But how can you make sure that you don't let up? Yeah. You don't lose the momentum. Guys that would come off the bench, um, make sure that they stayed up. And guys, uh, Jackson Robinson Evans didn't come in yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the Big 12 sixth man the of the Big year. Big 12. Uh, by the way, best sixth man of the year in BYU basketball history. I wholeheartedly believe that. And uh, he hasn't even come in yet. And so my hope is that we can keep this up. And, and what a momentum builder. You know, to be able to, to win the first game of the tournament and then to just go and face Texas Tech tomorrow if they win with, with you know, seeing the hoop this big. And so what a, what a performance by BYU so far.